Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we are continuing with my fitness database series. This is part four, so if you haven't watched parts one through three, go watch those first, then come on back. Alrighty, we've got our food list all set up, but we've got no way to get to the food form. So let's do that first. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assume if you're clicking on these guys, you want to see the details, right? There's a couple of ways you can do it. You could do it with a sub form or you could just have the other form pop up over here and have it stay synchronized with whatever is clicked on over here. Let's try that first. Let's do that one first. See, see if we like it. So we'll do that in an on current event. If you want to learn more about this event, go watch this video. The on current event fires when you move from record to record, including the first record. So what we're going to say in this forms on current event is we're going to say do command open form the food F where so comma, 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 where condition is going to be where the food ID equals food ID on the current form on the list form. Now, the field doesn't exist, but food ID exists in the record set under the form. Nine times out of ten, you can get away with this. Sometimes you can't. Let's find out. Ready? Boom. There it is. See? And then when you click on different ones here, they'll stay synchronized. See, there's bananas, there's tangerines, there's beans. What I like to also do is we can also set up some conditional formatting so you know which row you're on over here. And there's a way to do the whole row at once. In fact, I have a whole video on it, but I'm just going to do the current field because it's simple. It's really super simple. You just select the whole row like that, go to format, conditional formatting, new rule, and then you go right here, field has focus, and we'll just set that to yellow like that. And then you can very easily tell which one of these fields in here has the focus. Ready? See, you can see you're there, you can see you're there, you can see you're there, and so on. And that's good enough for me, I think. Right. If you want to see the trick where you can highlight the whole row and then maybe have the field that you're on a little darker, I got a whole video on it. I just don't feel like doing it right now. Maybe we'll do it later. But if not, here you go. And I'm just going to make sure this is right up next to there. I've also got code. It's in my code vault to make it so that if you move this form, this guy will follow it. But I don't think that's necessary right now. I just want to get a lot of the features here built. I'm not too worried about about a ton of bells and whistles just yet. We're gonna, we're gonna add some bells and whistles as we go along, but we don't need to do them all at once. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Now we need a way to, we can add a new record here, but I also wanna put a button down here to add a new record because it'll confuse some people if they don't know, you know, how to basically open up any record. Or if you don't have any records in here, you won't see it. So we're gonna have to add an add button down here on the bottom. And form design, grab a command button, drop it down here. Um, you could use the wizard for this, but I, I'm going to try to avoid using the command button wizards because I like to use VBA code and the command button wizards, they create macros and I don't like macros. So add new and we'll call this our add new button, add new BTN and then right click build event. And this is going to be the same as before. Do command dot open form the food F, but this time we're going to go comma, comma, comma comma ac form add we're going to go into add mode okay so what's going to happen is click and then hit add oh wait what happened it didn't go to a new record all right because the form's already open all right let's fix that go back into code all we really have to do here first is close the form if it's already open now you can say do command dot close and then AC form, comma, the object name is going to be food F, right? And then save as close means if there are design changes, do you want to save them? Well, I'm, I always put AC save yes, because your end users, if they're running a, a lockdown database, a compiled database, they won't be able to save it anyways. And I've had many times where I've made some design changes and then click the button and then it didn't save it. So I like to always say AC save yes. Now there is one little problem with this is that if you click that button now and that form isn't already open, let's say the user closes this. Er, oh, okay, it did work in that case. Sometimes it'll throw an error. So all you have to do is in this case, because if that form's not open, it can't close it. So here you just put an on error resume next. 
I do have code in my code vault to check to see if a form is open, but that's fine. That just ignores the error if an error does indeed happen. So now you go to the food list, you can go to add new, see, closes it and reopens it. Okay, and if it's not open, there you go. All right. Uh, one thing I noted in the extended cut with the other members is that this guy here is, is still in the tab order. I'm going to take him out of the tab order because if I go tab, 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 see, it, it stops over here. I don't like that. I'm going to take this guy out of the tab order. So you double click and go to other and tab stop is now no. Save it and make sure when you make changes, you move it back over here. So it's next to this guy. Save it as well. And another thing I want to change I want to make this menu long and slender, kind of like the navigation pane, instead of like this. That way I can still see this status box when the other forms are open. So we're going to make this a little bit smaller. So we're just going to do, for now, we're just going to slide you into here like this. We're going to add more buttons. We're going to have a bunch of buttons on this main menu eventually. But for now, we're just going to do that. And let's just make this fitness. We don't need DB. And yes, I know I modified it there, but I plan on resizing the label anyways. There we go. Okay, much better. Save that, close it, and now I got my menu there. I got my food list next to it, right there. And I'm going to put this guy up next to it there. And it should fit when this navigation pane is closed. Perfect, look at that. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys in the last video, part three, what we did in the extended cut, so I could try to convince you guys to join. Uh, I pulled the API key out of the database because uh, I kept flashing it accidentally in the video. So we moved the API. The API key is what you need to talk to chat GPT, the open AI interface. And I can, and I kept showing it, which is like your own private key, right? Then I made it so you can status your colored, uh, you can color your status box. And we actually added speech into it so that the, uh, the database can actually talk, which is pretty cool. And you can see here, I've got API key loaded successfully. When the database starts, it loads up the API key and it made this green. So that's just little, little enhancements. Now, what I'd like to do next is this list, it's short now, but it's going to get long. You're going to, I mean, you might have hundreds of items in here if you track everything that you eat. I know I've, in my previous databases I built, I've had lots of items in here. So I'm going to do it so that we can uh, filter this list easily by the group without having to right click and then filter that way. We can just pick from a combo box up top, right? That would be pretty sweet. So I'm gonna slide this bar down here. We're gonna move this label down. And up here, we're gonna put a combo box with the food groups in it. When they pick a, a food group, it'll, it'll filter that list just to that group. All right, sounds pretty cool, right? All right, form design, combo box, drop a combo box up, yeah. Look up the values of a table or query. Give me my list of food groups. Bring them both over. Sort it by description. That's what it's going to look like next. All right. Now we're not going to store the value in any field. It's not bound to a field in the table. Just hang on to it. We're going to do some stuff with it with code. Okay. Label. We're going to get rid of it anyways. And then hit finish. Okay. So delete this. This is going to be our food group filter. So open that up. Come over here to all, come up at the top. We're gonna to call this guy the food group filter. Okay, it's gonna start off at null. So we're gonna show everything. And then when they change this, we're just gonna change the filter property. Where are you? The data filter property right here of the form and then turn it on. If you wanna learn more about filtering and ordering and all that kind of stuff, go watch this video. All right, so in this guy's after update event, the after update runs when you change the value in that box. We're gonna say me.filter, that's the filter of me. What is me? Me is the form you're on. In this case, the food list of me.filter equals. Now, what is actually in that food group filter? Well, that's a food group ID. And we wanna change the food group ID in the form that we're on. So food group ID equals the food group filter. That's it. And then we got to just turn the filter on me dot filter on equals true. Okay. All right. Save it. Yep. Debug compile once in a while. Close it. Close it. Oh, we got to do that. We got to do that too. When this guy closes, we should close this too. Maybe. I don't know. I, I like doing that. If, if this guy closes, it closes its child form. 
All right, open her up. Now, let's say I want to filter just by fruits. And oh, 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 this brings up another interesting point. See, this is why we're doing this together, because I can't change this value. Does anybody know why? Take a hint, take a guess, raise your hands. Because allow edits is off. Allow edits won't let you edit any of the records or even any of the unbound fields. So we got to make a, a change. See, this is why it's cool when I'm doing this stuff with you guys without pre planning it because I didn't I forgot about this okay so what we have to do in this case is the form has to allow edits so we'll go to data allow edits has to be to yes but we still don't want people to mess with this stuff right so we're just going to lock these fields so click over here select all those fields and set locked to yes so now the form allows edits but those fields don't but now this guy does so now we should be able to change that value so save it Close it, open it, and now let's try fruits. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Let's try a different one. Let's go nuts and seeds. I don't think I have any nuts and seeds. Well, there's a nut right here. I'll tell you, I'm a crazy one. Vegetables? No, I don't have any vegetables. Protein? What's in here? Oh, okay. How about if I want to see everything? Let's delete this and hit tab. Okay, so we have to be able to handle null values. Hit debug. Bring it right there. Okay. So what we're going to do is in here, we're just going to say if is null food group filter, then all we're going to say is me dot filter on equals false. Else set the filter. Okay. All we got to do is just turn it off if they blank that. Okay. Save it. Debug compile. Come back out here. Let's, oh, we can just go right from here. Okay. Pick frozen dinners and then let's delete it. And look at that, it turns the filter off. I often find it's easiest to put a little checkbox here, or not a checkbox, a little button here to turn the filter off instead of having to remember to come in here and then delete this and do that. So what we're gonna do is, we'll drop a little button right there. I'll just copy this one, copy, paste, slide it up here. I'll put a little X in there like that. And then you could put a little picture or whatever you want. I just use a little X button like this. This, this is just turn off that filter. Okay, and that, that, and then this guy here, we'll rename it filter off button. Right click build event. And, and here I wanna say uh, me.filter on equals false. And let's blank what's in the box too. So we'll say uh, food group filter equals null. Okay, debug compile, close it, close it, open it. All right, let's put something in here. Fruits, close it. Look at that. That's pretty cool, huh? Oils and fats. And notice when this guy filters, the on current event fires and it up updates this guy. All right? If you want to link these so that if you close this form, this one closes too, we can do that as well. Right click, design view, come in here. Find the on close event or the on unload event. Doesn't really matter. On close is one I usually use. The difference is on unload can be canceled. And in here, we're just going to put in here, uh, do command. The, the close, where's the close command? Do I have it in here? No, it's in the other form. Oh, there it is right here. We're just going to copy that and put it right there. So it'll close the food form. If it's if it's open, it'll close it and it'll, it'll uh, ignore any errors in case it's not open. Or you can use my is form loaded code from the code vault if you're a gold member. But honestly, for something this simple, you really don't need the on uh, the is loaded um, because it's just one line. I, usually I use the is loaded if it's going to be like a lot of logic depends on whether or not that form is open. In this case, it's just try to close it. Ignore any errors if it's not open. Okay. Okay. Here we go. And. And it's not going to run when it because the form wasn't open first. But now if I close it there, see, they both close together. They're linked in a cosmic ballet. There we go. That's pretty sweet. Next time in part five, we're going to start off by putting a little search box up here, too. So if you want to search for bananas, doesn't matter what group it's in. Just type in B-A-N-A, -A, hit tab, boom, and it'll just find you anything that's got banana in it down here. All right. That'll be part five, we'll start it, and part five. And that's going to be on Monday, July 14th, 2025, because today is Thursday when this is being released. 
and tomorrow Friday is going to be Quick Queries Friday, and I take the weekends off. Sorry, I do. Well, I don't take the weekends off. I don't release videos on the weekends. It gives me a chance to catch up. <laughs> but I still work. I, I work when you work for yourself. You work every day that you can. So I don't. It's rare that I take a day off. Off. My wife isn't happy about that, but uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, so Monday we'll continue with part five, and we'll start with that search feature. And that's going to do it for your, your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that Show More link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.